Well, good morning. I trust and pray that this video finds you well. And I know that it's been a long time since I've done one of these videos, but today I really felt it important to be able to speak about this day that often gets overlooked on the Christian calendar, and that is Ascension Day. Now, you may be sitting here thinking and, and wondering to yourself, well, what is Ascension Day? I'm not even sure what that means anymore. And I want to give you a quick background on it before I reflect on three hopes that I believe that come out of the Ascension that I'm reminded about every single year and, and just are overwhelmed with them again this year. But before that, before I do that, as I give you that background, I want to read for us the words of Acts chapter 1, verse 9 to 11, where Luke really records this for us. And then I want to drive us to these three hopes. But here's what, here's what Luke says in Acts chapter 1. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took them out of their sight. And, be, and while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you have gone, as seen him go into heaven. This day... 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead, after his resurrection, where he conquered sin and death, Jesus comes and prepares and, and returns to the Father. And yet it's interesting because Jesus had been preparing his disciples for this day even before he died, that he would return to the Father and would come back for his children. Now, I don't know about you, but... I think about the times of a departure of a friend or a family member. And I think of those times as not easy. As I thought about those times of leaving my parents or my family. But from this departure today, from this ascension, I want to share three quick reminders of hope that we have because Jesus ascend, ascended into heaven that will cause us to be filled with great joy, that will cause us to worship. And that will cause us to keep looking to Jesus, even during these difficult days. And that leads us right into reason number one. And reason number one for our hope is that, hope number one is that Christ sat down. His work is finished. You see, the first hope that we have in the ascension of Jesus is that Christ's atoning work on earth is done. He doesn't have to keep coming back to it. He doesn't have to keep on doing it. He doesn't have to keep doing more sacrificial work. But the atoning work of Jesus Christ is done. And he sat down. Look at what the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. He says, He is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Even in Mark's account of the ascension, Mark says that he ascended into heaven and he sat down. You know, I think about those times where I'm doing work, right? And I come and I get tired, so I'm like, man, I'm going to sit down just for a moment. And it becomes so hard to get back up. But, you, you know, you realize you're like, man, I got to keep getting up and I got to keep doing this work. Then there's that moment, right? Then there's that moment when you know the work is done and you sit down and there's rest. There's accomplishment. And as Jesus ascends back into heaven, back to the throne room of the Father, which he gave up in humility as he came to earth to live a perfect life, to take your sin and my sin upon his shoulders, to bear the wrath of God that you and I deserve to bear, to die, to be buried, but to rise again. Jesus sits down because his atoning work is finished and the victory is won. Psalm 110 verse 1 says, The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your, until I make your, enemies your footstool. See, the right hand there, the right hand reference doesn't mean that Jesus is less than the Father because we know that they are equal because they are God. But rather, it's a term of ruling power. It's a term of authority. It's a term of majesty. And guess what, folks? Jesus is there. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11 and 12 reminds us that every, and every priest stands daily in his service, 
offering repeatedly the same sacrifice, which can never take away sin. But when Christ had offered a single, for all time, a single sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of God. See, the priest could never sit down because their job was never finished. They were constantly giving the same sacrifice. And notice what the writer of Hebrews says, that could never take away sin. But all that changed when Christ came with the single sacrifice once for all. Have hope, my friends, who, put, who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That single sacrifice was sufficient to take away sin and bring about salvation. And Christ sat down. If you're listening to this and you've never embraced Jesus Christ, then I pray that you're going to see today there's only one that can take away sin because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And apart from the single sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we all would be destined for hell. But I pray today that you will put your trust in the one who has sat down at the right hand of the Father because his atoning work is finished. But that leads us into hope number two, and here's our second hope today, is that Christ is our intercession. Think back to, I want you to think back to, for maybe just a moment, and maybe you've had this happen in your life, where somebody's actually stood up as a defense for you against an attack, maybe verbal uh, or otherwise. Well, in a much greater way, in a much more powerful way, the great intercessor stands against an accuser and overcomes on our behalf. Romans chapter 8, verse 34 says, Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus. He is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who is interceding for us. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25 says, Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he, is always, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Friends, our hope in the ascension of Christ is that we have one who is in the throne room of God, at the right hand of God, making our defense against the evil one who loves nothing more than to point out all of our failures, all of our sin, all of our wrongdoings, and accuses us to the Father, saying they are not worthy of your gospel. And Jesus is there, and he says they are guilty, but... I have taken their guilt upon my shoulders. I have paid their price. And I have put upon them, my, my children, I have put upon them my righteousness. This does not mean that we're perfect. But we do have a mediator. And as John says in 1 John 2, 1, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. This doesn't mean that we just keep on sinning and, what, and do whatever, whenever we want, without remorse, but our advocate stands before the Father and says, here is my righteousness, and this makes this child worthy. But let me say to you today, if you have not placed your faith in Jesus Christ, you do not have an advocate. And we will never stand before the Lord. And so when I implore you today, Put your faith in the great advocate who sits interceding for his people. And that leads us to our final hope. And here's our final hope. And I hope these have been an encouragement to you today. But hope number three is that Christ is gone, but Christ will return. You see, the promise of the ascension is that, yes, Jesus is going away, but he's coming back. I think about that every single time I have to say goodbye to my family. My hope is that it won't be too long until I see them again. The difference between that hope and this hope is that I don't know if that's going to happen with my family. I don't know if I'll see my family again in person. But our hope is secure in the fact that God's word is true. In the fact that it is impossible for God to lie. And God tells us that one day Jesus Christ will return. It's amazing to me in Luke's account of the ascension in Luke chapter 24, verse 50 to 53, that as he, as he returns, as, he, uh, as Jesus returns to the throne room, the disciples return to Jerusalem. And here's how Luke records it. He says that they're worshiping. 
They're praising the Lord with great joy and they're blessing God in the temple. And to be honest, it's not the response I give when I come back from the airport after dropping off my family. But the disciples were so overwhelmed with the hope that they had, that they rejoiced that even though Jesus went to heaven, he was coming back. See, that's the reason for the hope. And we see that in Acts 1.8. This Jesus, or sorry, in Acts 1.11, this Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. We are reminded of that hope from Jesus himself in John 14, 3, where he says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. So for those of us who have placed our faith in Jesus Christ, whether we die here and see him there, or whether he comes back and claims his church for himself, the promise is this, that where he is, we will be also. Christ will return. And every day that we live, we move closer and closer to that return. But the question is, are we ready? Friends, Jesus is coming again. But are we ready? By placing our faith in him, by persevering through these days, living in the hope of what is to come. Are we ready for his return? Because ready or not, he's coming. And the question of where we will spend eternity, with him or separated from him in the place called hell, is dependent on have we placed our faith in him. My dad told Don and I when we were dating that without goodbyes, there's no hellos. Well, this was the goodbye for now. But thanks be to God, there is coming a day where there will be a great hello and the return of Christ will take place. The end of Revelation says, he who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. We pray, come Lord Jesus. And so on this day that we often overlook to, on the church calendar, let us be reminded of the hope that we have, that Christ's work is accomplished and he sat down. That he is, that we have the greatest intercessor we could ever possibly have, interceding, making defense for us. And we live in the hope of the return of Christ. May we live in that hope of the one who ascended, who is seated, making intercession, but will stand up to return for his bride. Until that day, I pray that we would be like the disciples who worshiped with great joy and were rejoicing to the praise and the glory of God. So why don't we pray as we go into this day? So Father, I thank you so much for the hope that we live in, the hope of this day, the hope that as your son ascended back into heaven, we live in the hope that one day he will return. And I pray even today, Spirit, I pray that you would be transforming hearts, that you would be changing hearts, making hearts new, so that we will be ready upon that day, upon Christ's return. Oh, what a day that will be, when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face and see the wonder of his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, what a glorious day that will be. Until that day, I pray that we would be worshiping you, that we would be praising with great joy, knowing that we live in, that, in the hope of the completed work, the completed atoning work of Christ, that we have a great intercessor who will return again. Thank you, Father, for the reminder in your word this morning. And we commit it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Trust and pray that these have been an encouragement to you as we think and reflect on the ascension of our Christ. In Jesus' name.